Welcome, data-driven problem solvers. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first video in the series, How to Be a Data-Driven Problem Solver. For 10 weeks, we'll be learning all about how to solve business problems using best practices from research, analysis, and design that all leverage data. Each week, I'll summarize five key points from our learning and even give you some ideas for how you can apply these in your career. So let's get started with the first key learning point. Number one, understand the context. Before we can harness the power of data-driven problem solving, we need to define the problem itself. And that starts with context. It's important to first identify the needs of the organization, users, or community that you're problem solving for. Whether it's an organization, a product, or even a shared social outcome, you first need to understand all the moving parts and any interdependencies that might be contributing to the issue. Here, I recommend using tools like stakeholder analysis and SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, or threats, as these are really helpful in pinpointing areas for focus. Speaking of focus, point number two is the power of a focused question. Once you have the grasp of the context, you're gonna need to start narrowing down the focus. This is where crafting a powerful research question becomes crucial. A good question is like a roadmap. It tells you exactly where you're going and what you hope to discover. So formulating a perfect question can be a little tricky, but if you keep topic one in mind and always stay in tune with the context and the needs, then you can continue to fine tune your question to one that's clear, concise, and aligned to the impact you hope to have. Number three, leverage problem solving frameworks. When you have a problem that's well understood and a focused question that you want to address, you can turn to already existing frameworks, ones that are tried and true methods for how to go about using data to solve problems. The two that I recommend learning are the scientific method and design thinking. The scientific method is a systematic approach for acquiring knowledge and using steps like observation, hypothesis testing, and experimentation. It starts by forming an educated guess or hypothesis about the problem, then designing an experiment or analysis that's going to test whether or not that guess appears to be true, and using the results of those analyses to draw conclusions based on the data that you have. You can kind of think of the scientific method approach like being a detective working on a case. The detective observes what's happening, asks questions, gathers clues, data, analyzes them, and then shares the finding back. The other method I really appreciate is design thinking. Design thinking is more like an inventor rather than a detective. It starts with the problem and then gets creative to imagine solutions, and then test those different possible ideas and refine and tweak them until they find a perfect fix. Design thinking is a human-centered approach to problem solving, and it empathizes empathy for the people involved. Empathizes, empathizes, emphasizes empathy. Whew. Try to say that five times fast. It emphasizes empathy for the people involved. It includes a series of iterative steps, including understanding the people's needs, brainstorming solutions, prototyping or testing those solutions, and then seeing what real people think of them and getting that feedback as a way to refine and edit. Both of these methods are going to be fantastic ways for you to approach your problem in a way that will allow you to gather the type of data needed to support a finding. Which gets to the next point, number four. You are gonna have to get your hands on that data if you wanna do data-driven problem solving. So using one of those problem solving approaches or a combination of steps from both of them, you can use them as a guided plan for how to find that hidden knowledge and get the valuable insights out of the data. But remember that data isn't just numbers. It's any aspect that can help you better address or understand your problem. By carefully sifting through information and analyzing the patterns, you can start to uncover the why 
behind the problem and what's happening. Last for today, number five, collaboration. It's key to remember that most large, impactful problems that we hope to address with data in our careers just can't be accomplished alone. It's going to take a whole team. A team brings diverse perspectives, and when you get a group of people together looking at the same problem, each person can bring a completely different viewpoint. And together, the team sees a bigger picture and can identify different solutions than any one person might be able to do on their own. Just remember that data can be interpreted in so many different ways, and collaboration is that key to being able to let you see that data from different viewpoints and angles and then apply it to your problem solving. So those are our five uh, key learning concepts. And here's a couple ways you can think about using them in your career. Uh, let's say that you are working in an organization that happens to be having a little bit of logistics issues. Basically, things aren't moving as fastly or efficiently through the normal work steps as they should be. That's a great opportunity to say, hey, why don't we address this problem using the scientific method? We can pinpoint specific steps that might uh, be hypothesized to have issues, collect data about those steps, and then conduct experiments where we make small changes in those steps and assess the data to see whether or not making those changes impacted the efficiency and flow of work. So be a great example of applying scientific method in your career. Another example, let's say that you are looking to increase engagement for anything. It could be for a company, it could be for your social movement, it could be for your nonprofit, it could be for your uh, community group. But what you're wanting to do is increase engagement by improving communication strategies. This will be a great opportunity to leverage design thinking, to brainstorm creative new communication strategies. And you could start by empathizing with your target audience defining the problem and ideating different possible communication approaches, and then prototyping and testing different communication resources and gathering the data from how much people interacted with those as a form of analysis to determine which communication strategies are most engaging and powerful for your audience. So it'd be a great application of design thinking for data-driven problem solving. And while it's not an example, I hope that you'll know that regardless of what you're trying to do with your career, collaboration is always going to be a great aspect to apply. For example, if you were trying to analyze data and looking at different user behavior, you could bring together a diverse set of individuals who might look at them in different ways. For example, a marketing person might spot trends in user data that a data scientist would miss. And also the data scientist might notice things and patterns that a marketer might not have at first noticed. These are the type of opportunities that people from different backgrounds and different experiences and skill sets can bring together to help any type of project really exceed and have data applied in new ways. All right, that's it for this week. And keep in mind, these are just frameworks and concepts. They're meant to be foundations and give you a really good place to start from. But you're still going to need to build specific skills for carrying out each action, which is exactly what we'll get to in the coming weeks. So can't wait to see you then.